The Holy Spirit just revealed, decoded, no wind. It's found in Revelation chapter 7, verse 2, I think it is. And this is a warning. This is an absolute warning. This is something that um, I've just dropped everything. I went through a few verses, and now I just went through a few more. And I would like to, the Holy Spirit wants everyone to hear this, because this is an absolute warning of what is happening. So, the doctrine is, is of no wind. First beginning in Revelation, and this goes into Ezekiel 34, goes into Jeremiah, um, what God and what Jesus Christ spoke regarding the, 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 leaving, of the, Her, uh, the leaving of Herod and the Pharisee to be uh, word of them and how uh, to be, uh, understand them, uh, to take heed of them, to not be deceived by them. And, of course, what Paul spoke of regarding the grievous wolves that will come in and not spare the flock. In Revelation 7, this is what's happening. And this is a dire warning. In Revelation 7, says, uh, saying, verse 3, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the tree till we have sealed the servants of our God upon their foreheads. So in verse 2 says, in verse 1, After this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on the earth or sea or against any tree. So this is a time of stagnant. It's stagnant. Zechariah says, the whole world, we've probed around the entire world, we, we've went around the world, and we have, and the whole world is at rest. They're reporting back to God. So this is what no wind is. So no wind is um, happening right. It is happening right now. And what that means is here we uh, can go into uh, begin in. Um, let's say we begin in Deuteronomy 32. Work our way back. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 20, And he said, I will hide my face from them, I will see what their end will be, for they are a perverse generation, a children, in whom is no faithfulness. And he goes on, And they have stirred me to jealousy which what is, uh, with what is not God, they have provoked me with their idols, and that's also self, selfies and self, selfish... Um, uh, worship of self. I will stir them to jealousy with those who are not a people. I will provoke them with a foolish nation. So, uh, it says, For, for a, fire, a fire is kindled in my anger, and it burns to the depths of hell, devours the earth and its increase, and sets on fire the foundations of the mountain. So it says here in verse 23, here it is here again, it says, And I will heap evils, okay, that's the, the, that's the, the effect uh, of it, of the cause of it, uh, the cause and effect. In verse 23, And I will heap evils upon them, I will spend my arrows upon them. So he's heaping it up in a time of no wind. Okay, he's letting it go, and then destruction comes quickly as a thief. In uh, Jeremiah, let's say in, in 1 Samuel 3, 1 Samuel verse, or chapter 3, verses 12 to 13. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from the beginning to the end, and I tell, and, and I tell him that I am uh, about to punish his house forever for the iniquity which he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. And so that's what he's setting this up right now to come to execute judgment for the first time in the history of creation. So this is all being hoarded up, this judgment for this generation. That's why the Bible says, Lamentations 5, 7, that all of our fathers have sinned and we have bore their iniquities. Isaiah 
also says that all our forefathers, uh, all the sins of the forefathers is going to be poured, poured on the laps of this generation. That's also in Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 44, 27, Jeremiah 44, 27, Behold, I am watching over them for evil and not for good. All the men of Judah who are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by famine until there is an end of them. So what is happening? Okay, It says in verse 28, the word, written word of God, And those who escape the sword shall return from the land of Egypt to the land of Judah. That's Jerusalem. Few in number. And all the remnant of Judah who came to the land of Egypt to live shall know whose word shall stand, mine or theirs. So what this is referring to is when ministers and street preachers are sent to, to, the, to anyone. And he's speaking regarding also the tabernacle of Moses and they reject the word, they refuse the word, they stop their ears, they become violent against the word of God. There's no, then they're living in a time where they're not hearing from God. And God is setting them up for complete doom. Absolute, utter destruction. They feel, Look at the world. Everybody feels secure in their religion. Their religion is right. They know they're right. They're so sure of themselves. And, and that, that is, in itself must put fear into the hearts of all humanity who, who have an odor of God, even. Just understanding how the people are so deceived. Not everybody can be right. We must take heed. In uh, Ecclesiastes, so in uh, Ecclesiastes also, so in Jeremiah 44, 27, I have a note here also saying doom. It is, it is a grievous end of doom. They're being set up for, for the netherworld, to, to, for, for, for show, for the fullness of the refinement fire of God all at once. For an eternity. That's what they're being set up for. Here in uh, Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesi it's a trap. It's a snare. It's the fowler snare. The snare of God. In Ecclesiastes, seven verse two. It's better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For this is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness the countenance of the heart is made glad. You know, this just keeps going. The heart of the wise is in the house of the mourning, but the heart of the fools is in the house of the mirth. Is that the, is in, in Proverbs said it is, it is focused on the ends of the earth. And this is what's happening. Men are focused through patriotism to the ends of the earth. They're looking to solve their problems. Somehow they're looking at for the ends of the earth. They're not turning away from the world. It's a trap. It is better for a man to hear the rebuke of the wise than to hear the song of fools. The Hegelian rhetoric, politics, and, and religion, and science, and, and social, and environmental, and te te uh, technological, and, so and social, and uh, all the seven spirits of Rome governing this world. In Hosea, so in, in Ecclesiastes 7.2 is the instructions for the time of no wind. In Hosea chapter 13, and this is the second coming of Jesus Christ. The pastors, he says in Jeremiah, the pastors have destroyed my, 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 my people. And he's hard on, he's, he is he said teachers are going to be judged much more severely. Beginning in verse 4 in Hosea 13, I am the Lord your God from the land of Egypt. You know no God but me, and besides me there is no Savior. 
I, it was I who knew you in the wilderness, in the land of drought. But when they had fed to the full, they were filled, and their heart was lifted up. Therefore they forgot me. So I will be to them like a lion, like a leopard. I will lurk beside the way. This is a time of no wind. Unawares. I will fall upon them like a bear robbed of her cubs. I will tear open their breasts, I, and there I will devour them like a lion. A wild beast would rend them. I will destroy you, O Israel. Who can help you? Where now is your king to save you? Where are all your princes to defend you? Those of whom you said, Give me a king and princesses. I have given you kings in my anger, and I have taken them away in my wrath. There is no king. There is none who can deliver in these times. Only Jesus Christ can deliver us. People are walking in blindness, and the blind is leading the blind into the pits of hell. So this is to take to heart. This is serious. I see this happening. I see this happening. This is happening right now. People are doomed. People are walking in, in, in falsehoods. People are walking in a delusion. Not taking heed to the ministers of God. Not taking heed to the message that Jesus Christ has sent. The God of Israel said, I've sent you my people. I've sent you people rising up early in the morning. My prophets, my messengers telling you to turn, but you've stopped your ears. You've rejected my word. So if you will not hear and you will continually reject my word, he says, my patience will run out and you would have to go and serve your gods and see if they can save you in a time of your need. Because when you cry out to me, I will not hear you. I cried out to you many times in the times of your prosperity. But you said, no, we will not hear. God is saying that the time is coming when he's not going to hear you. Destruction comes as a thief suddenly in the times of peace when people are yelling, false peace and false security, false prosperity. Destruction comes upon them like a thief. And when the economy falls and the people are vomited out and destruction comes at noonday, at midnight and midnight, at the same hour, all these things fall upon the nations, upon the entire world. It's too late. He says, I'm not going to listen to you. It's done. You're sealed. The creation is done. God is sealing up His 144,000 in a time of no wind. In a time of drought, of famine, of hearing the Word of God. Only the humble and the meek can inherit the Kingdom of God. It is impossible for the exalted, self-exalted, for the violent, for the strong, for the righteous, in their own eyes, to inherit the Kingdom of God. There was a, a Pharisee, and there was a, a, a beggar, a Republican, a, a, a poor man. And the Pharisee said to God, he says, I'm glad that, I, that I'm tied. I'm so thankful. I tied cumin and, and mint, and, and I do all these things. I pay my tithes, and I, and I follow God. And, I'm a, and, and the, the poor man, he beat his breast and said, Oh, forgive me, oh God, a sinner. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I tell you, the poor man is the one who went home having the righteousness of God. For he who will be exalted, who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who is humbled will be exalted. God came for sinners, for those who recognize that they need a Savior. God came for those who are needy, who see their own weaknesses, who see what's happening out there, and they're mourning and groaning over the violence done to the children over the violence done to the innocent, to those who are, who are called innocent but are, but, are, but are guilty, to those who are called guilty but are innocent. There is no justice in the land, and the prayer of Habakkuk, the, the inquiring of Jeremiah, is now ready to be answered.